You're listening to the Telltale Channel. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check out my Patreon. You can find some ad-free, uncensored, complete versions of my videos on my website, owenmorgan.com. All links are in the description. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. You guys should be able to see a much clearer image of me now. I switched cameras. It's not a new camera. It's just I'm using a different one. Unfortunately, the one that I'm using requires that I press a button on the back every 30 minutes, and if I don't, then I'm just going to flip off. So, uh, Got a couple of interesting subjects I wanted to cover tonight. First of all, I want to talk about copyright and Aiden Ross, uh, Hasanabi. I don't know if you guys have heard of these people or not. I'll explain. And uh, what's going on with their whole copyright situation. And I want to talk about Steven Crowder, who is on screen here. I've talked about Steven Crowder a little bit uh, recently, but to make a long story short, he is in a divorce battle with his wife and was revealed to be an abuser, um, extremely emotionally, verbally abusive to his wife. It's been released to the public. There's a video of it. If you want to see a more thorough breakdown of it, I have a video that's coming out on my Telltale Fireside Chat channel should be up soon. Or you can check my Telltale Unfiltered channel that released today. Um, I mean, as of the day that this live stream released. If you just want to like see my whole collection of it, go to my website, owenmorgan.com, and type in Steven Crowder. Every video I've ever released on all of my channels about Steven Crowder will pop up in the search there. Uh, one more thing. If you guys don't mind i would appreciate it if you start a video of mine try to watch to the end and if you can't watch to the end then watch as much as possible because watch time correlates to how far a video will be pushed in the youtube in the youtube algorithm i asked you guys to watch the entirety of a video recently on my fireside chat channel and it exploded like no video I've ever seen explode on my channel before, on the Fireside channel before. Got 12,000 views in an hour. I think the most I've ever seen was on my main channel. Got 23,000 views on my main channel in an hour. It was crazy. So anyways, yeah, watch as much as you can. Liking and subscribing are extremely important also, just as important. But yeah, watch time average, not by percentage, but total watch time average um, is what determines how far a video is pushed in the algorithm. So anyways, about, um, about Aiden Ross and Hasanabi. While we talk about these guys, uh, we're going to, uh, hang on one second. Just pull this puppy up. We're going to play, uh, Pokemon Fire Red. It's actually a ROM hack called Ultraviolet that lets me catch every Pokemon. So yeah, I'm just kind of, kind of play through it while I talk about this whole situation. <clears throat> As a lot of you guys probably are aware, I'm dealing with a copyright battle myself with Lionsgate. Now, Lionsgate is apparently, uh, I've come to find, a company that's actually really big and not exclusively a Christian film production company. It's a lot more than just Christian film production. They've done like Hellboy and a bunch of other movies, right? Well, they also did God's Not Dead. They, uh, they didn't make it or produce it, but I think they like distributed it. They're the, the distributor, I believe. So anyways, um, I reviewed God's Not Dead on my channel not too long ago. And Lionsgate absolutely refused to let me like keep it up basically they wanted all the money from it and i don't want them getting a penny from me or from you guys or anybody else because you know they support a religious propaganda institution and i would rather not criticize but the thing is the law allows me to criticize according to fair use what i did was completely in the legal right so i decided to challenge this i'm taking this as far as i need to take it to put this video up on my channel. I mean, they've already stifled its reach by tying it up in um, paperwork, not litigation yet, but paperwork at the very least, at the height of its popularity. You know, a video 
does its absolute best that it ever will in like the first week and its first week was spent in limbo with all of this so uh i have a paper it's a basically a 14 page paper that i sent to them with a bunch of legal language i sent it to uh lionsgate that basically says uh, if you can, if you don't release these claims, you have committed perjury by submitting the paperwork that you submitted, and we will pursue litigation. And I sent a copy to YouTube that basically said they should be penalized for lying on legal paperwork like that. So we'll see how that turns out. But that I, you know, I've been waist deep in this whole like fair use legal situation for like weeks now while I'm dealing with all of this. And that's why I found it particularly interesting. Okay. I, I got to find my escape rope here. Where's my escape rope? That's why I find it particularly interesting that, uh, Hassan Piker and Aiden Ross are going at it right now. Okay. So what I did is perfectly within fair use. I'm, I'm completely allowed to, criticize a you know an intellectual property i'm allowed to air it if it's transformative and um and not a substitute for the original well here's where it gets interesting with hassan piker this is what hassan did uh he debated um andrew tate and he was on this stream with Aiden Ross and Andrew Tate and some other people. Uh, I think he was, I think uh, Hassan Piker was live streaming it at the moment, right? Well, apparently, I, I don't fully understand the situation, so you got to take this with a grain of salt, but I think that Hassan said that it didn't like his screen record didn't save so he asked aiden ross if he would send him his copy of the screen recording even though i believe aiden ross and hassan piker were both in the stream at the same time and both like sending it out sending the data to their youtube channels simultaneously and aiden ross says okay he sends the files over to Hassan Piker, who then edits it and uploads it to his channel, just similar to what I do. You know, I live stream and then I take the live stream and I cut it up and edit it and reorganize and clean it up, fix the audio glitches and removes the ums and uhs, and I send it out to the audience in a full, complete edited video, right? Well, that's what Hassan Piker did. He uploaded the edited version to his channel, and then Aiden Ross gave him a copyright strike for that fascinatingly so here's the question right who is in the right here because it was a conversation with hassan piker and andrew tate and the entirety of the conversation was between those two to my knowledge aiden ross didn't say a word right but that doesn't really matter i can go to hassan piker's house I'm talking from a legal perspective. I'm not a lawyer, and I believe this is how it works. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm not a legal expert, but from what I can tell, I could go to Hassan Piker's house with a camera, record him talking with my camera, and take that recording back and upload it to YouTube. And despite the fact that I am in it in no way, shape, or form, I have nothing to do with it aside from the fact that I owned the camera that filmed it i can have absolutely nothing to do with it and i still own the copyrights to it even though it's entirely hassan piker saying it so in this hassan piker v aiden ross thing i think aiden ross might be correct here legally now this was resolved already anyways um aiden ross released the copyright claim because hassan piker said if you really want to use this system against me, then we'll go all the way. And <laughs> he said, don't mess with me in not so kind terms. I love it, dude. I, Hassan Piker's 
an interesting guy, say the least. But he was basically planning on contacting every Instagram model that's ever been on Aiden Ross's stream before. And uh, having them file takedown notices to every video that Aiden Ross has ever released on his channel that has them in it, which they're completely in the legal right to do. And I think that's fantastic. If you're going to use the system against people, then you should have it used against you, in my opinion. Um, so anyways, I guess Aiden Ross dropped the, you know, the copyright takedown notice, which is good. It's exactly what should have happened. And people on YouTube are back to where we were before, which is to say we realize as YouTubers that it's a bad idea to use the copyright system against each other because it could set bad precedents. You don't want to mess with the copyright system. It's just a bad idea. Oh, and uh, one more thing that I've heard coming up a lot with this battle between Aiden Ross and, uh, you know, and Hasanabi is a lot of people saying the copyright system is broken. I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, the YouTube copyright system is broken. YouTube's got to get it together. They got to fix whatever it is they're doing right now with their copyright system. Only here's where it gets interesting. The copyright system that YouTube has set up is not YouTube's copyright system. It is the copyright system. This is like outlined in law. YouTube is literally just following what the law tells them to do. They're not like, they didn't come up with their own idea. They're not like passing a football back and forth. You know, they file a takedown notice, you file a dispute, they reject, you file an appeal. This isn't like, this isn't a YouTube problem. This is a legal problem. If people like Hasanabi, for example, don't like the way that the copyright system works, they shouldn't be complaining about YouTube. They should be complaining about the law and fix the law, the legal system. Only problem is that this is like largely made up of common law, which means this is all precedent that has been set in courts, not all of it. I mean, there are some legal things that, you know, there's legislation that's been set through various different, you know, bills and stuff like that. But a lot of the common law that's been established, I mean, some of this common law goes all the way back to like 1843 or something like that. It's crazy. Like this is, th this fair use stuff was established hundreds of years ago, the way that it all works, really. Now, DMCA is new. It's the Digital Millennium Copyright Act is what it stands for, I believe. So obviously it's newer, but most of the stuff we're dealing with right now is old as sin and very, very well established. So I don't think there are high chances of like fixing the, the, the whole thing, like restructuring the copyright system in the U.S. I'm not holding my breath on that one. Anyway, so yeah, I thought that was a really interesting little thing I wanted to bring to you guys about copyright, Aiden Ross, and Hasanabi and everything. So let's talk about Steven Crowder. This is Steven Crowder on screen, if you're unfamiliar. I mentioned him earlier. He's a complete scumbag for our all intents and purposes. I, I feel comfortable calling him a complete scumbag, right? He's absolutely terrible in every way. He's a far-right extremist conservative commentator with like 6 million subs or something. 5 or 6 million subs on YouTube. And he's big on Rumble too, I think. Maybe the biggest on Rumble? I'm not sure. Anyways, he's complaining about a new Barbie doll that was released. Like this is top on, of his list of things to complain about right now. Uh, this is in the beginning of a video titled DeSantis v. Trump are these polls manipulated. I, I He usually talks about the headline like that at the very end of the video. If you want to hear that, come over to my unfiltered YouTube channel. That's where I'll probably be talking about that. In the beginning of this, though, we're going to be talking about the Barbie doll. And it's terrible and cringy. So I, I listened to a little bit of this. Um... Let's just jump in. Listen to let's start at like three minutes and fifty seconds. Listen to what he has to say here. <laughs> Ooh, hold up. 
<laughs> testing, <laughs> testing, <laughs> one, two, you three. Hey, let me just turn it down a little. What? What? I don't know what. <laughs> All right, so let me ask you this question today. What is your... Okay. Well, I had it on, like, double speed. Sorry. Let me fix that. Playback speed, normal. Okay, here we go. All right, listen to this. You pen? What? What? Pen? I don't even know what it was. All right, so let me ask you this question of the day. What is your favorite COVID conspiracy theory that came true? You can comment below. And uh, you've already heard him, but you love him. He has his own theme song. Okay, interesting. Favorite COVID conspiracy theory. Well, let's check, shall we? Let's scroll down in his comments and see what people have to say. For the record, uh, a conspiracy theory is a conspiracy theory because there wasn't enough evidence to believe it when you espoused that idea. If you had a conspiracy theory, you were wrong. Whether it turned out to be true or not, you were wrong. That's how this works. If you don't have enough evidence to believe something, you shouldn't believe it. It's like people claiming COVID leaked from a lab. You had no reason to believe that at the time. There's no basis for it. And I think uh, Abraham Lincoln famously said, um, oh, God, I, I don't remember what, it, what the exact wording was, but it was something like if you say something without the evidence or if you claim something is true without having the evidence for it, then what you stated was false or something to that effect. So anyways, with that in mind, let's just scroll down and take a look at these dudes' comments, okay? Let's see what COVID conspiracy theories these people are, belie are you know, espousing in the comments. Okay, top comment here. But Steven, Steven, your abuse is sick. Legendary. Uh-oh. Looks, like, uh, <laughs> looks like we got a few people bringing up that video of him abusing his wife. Ouch. I'm surprised he didn't delete these uh, comments. The only way out of this is discipline and respect, Stephen. Uh-oh. Another reference to that video. If you're watching this five years in the future, let me just show you a quick bite of it. Hang on. Here it is right here. Hold up. Uh, let me just adjust... All right, close enough. This is uh, Stephen Crowder, August 20, or no, July 2021, when this is happening. His wife is eight months pregnant, and he's smoking a cigar in front of her, trying to order her to uh, give medicine to the dog and telling her that if she doesn't, then she's not disciplined enough. I drew a boundary. I drew a boundary. No, no, you just did, you just did it. I drew a boundary in abuse and control. You were not taking the car. Because if you refuse to do wifely things, then I will go pick up the groceries. If you refuse to do wifely things, he says, okay. I have steaks, wood pellets, my grill. I know it's not a reasonable request, but I'll go do it. How about you first? Hillary, how do you respect the man? Yes, how does the man? How does the man receive love? No, no. He's like refusing to let her take the car. He's refusing to let her like go off on her own or do anything or have space from him or, or, or anything at all. And it's like really, really disturbing. Anybody who's been in an abusive situation knows exactly what's happening and probably knows what this feels like. Then I will ask them to then I'll ask someone to pick me up, she says. If you don't let me take the car, someone's going to pick me up. And he says, is that a threat? Oh, that's right. It's not a threat, Stephen. Give an Uber. Okay, Stephen, I can't. Dude, this is so classically abusive. Like, I'm not getting to the abusive part. Again, if you want to see the full breakdown of the clip, then just check it out on my Fireside channel. I covered it there. Um... Or just, like, go to my website and type Steven Crowder, owenmorgan.com. It should pop up. But anyways, yeah, he was abusive to his wife, and uh, that's coming back to haunt him, apparently. Let's just scroll down see if we can find some mention of COVID conspiracies. Disgusting abuse of, women, of a woman carrying your child. I hope she's safe and surrounded by people who love and respect her. 
Dude's entire career is insulting young people for having silly opinions. Meanwhile, he's scamming and secretly recording his friends and abusing his wife. Wow, dude. Every comment in this guy's, like, uh, video here. Every comment. May I use the car, King Stephen? Also, may I please avoid poisoning my unborn child with dog medicine, my lord? Good on her for finally leaving you. Wow. That's fantastic. I love it to death. Like, every single... Let's just scroll down. Let's go. Uh, let's see. You'd think someone who's involved in the movie Sleppers would be totally against these degenerative agendas toward our children. Okay, there's a positive one towards Steven Crowder, at least. Uh, it's always the ones you most expect. Let's see. Can't believe they published it. You're going to miss having a good wife. They are hard to come by. There's one. That's negative against him again. I guess that 50 million doesn't sound like a slave contract anymore now, does that? Your house is burning. What? Oh, now that your house is burning. I assume they're talking figuratively. Uh, wow, man. Put on the gloves and walk the dog. She's getting ready to go shopping. You want her to walk the dog. I love it, dude. This video wasn't even about that, and he cannot avoid it. It's like front and center in his life now. I lo this is just fantastic. I'm glad he cannot escape the consequences of his actions. Anyway, that that's great. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about with Steven Crowder. Let's skip to 7 minutes, 30 seconds. That's where it really starts with the Barbie stuff, roughly. A boogie person, blood for the blood god, tips for the tip jar. Thank you so much. I appreciate the uh, super chat. Selfless Potato, if you're okay sharing, how big is your apartment and how much is rent? Went to NYC last weekend and seriously considering moving there. Also, literally, first thing I saw on the subway was JWs. Yeah, that's super common. My apartment is 850 square feet, I believe, and I am in Manhattan. I don't want to say how much my rent is. It's pretty high, but there are actually reasonably priced places in Manhattan. You can find decently priced spots. I mean... $1,000 a month for 850 square feet. It's not easy to find, and you got to go into, like, Harlem area, which is where I'm in, the Harlem area. But it's doable. I mean, you can totally find a decent spot that's inexpensive. And honestly, Manhattan isn't that dangerous, as far as I'm concerned. Like, nobody or nowhere in Manhattan is dangerous. Uh, maybe around 125th Street. And even that, you know, the most dangerous spots in Manhattan aren't that bad. Uh, I was in way worse areas than um, in Huntington, West Virginia, where I lived before. So <clears throat> anyway, yeah, take that for what you will. Uh, thanks, Selfless Potato. RJ, keep up the good fight, bro. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Zombie Bull Shark, thank you for playing the Bible Man clip. I rewatched the show and it's cringe. Hope the views go back up. Thank you so much. Yeah, views are going up dramatically on my um, my Fireside channel because I asked people to watch, you know, as long as you can or the full videos. It's just the more watch time you get, the better YouTube treats your channel or your video. So. Um, Fireside's doing okay. My main channel's still down. Unfiltered is down. Telltale Reads is down, but that's okay. You know, I'll, I'll make it. Not gonna stress. Um, anyway, thanks for the, uh, super chat. City Rail Dude. Hi, Owen. YouTube doesn't care about your paperwork. Most likely won't even read it. I had a situation with YouTube where I got the law involved and lie, and they lied to a gov to the government agency. Oh, yeah, I agree. I agree. That's why I sent it to Lionsgate also. And the next step in the process is uh, Lionsgate has to file, they have to get a court order to take the video down. So a judge or the CCB, the Copyright Something Bureau, you have to pay them $5,000 for a judge or a panel of arbitrators to review the case and make a determination as to whether or not it's justified to take the video down. Now, it's not justified to take the video down. Every part of fair use law is on my side. 
this is exactly what fair use was created for in the first place so uh i'm not worried their next step is to get a court order that's not going to happen it's simply not going to happen uh, in my opinion and if it does i will counter sue for you know lost wages because they put me through this entire fight and all kind whatever else lawyers fees a whole bunch of stuff because they lied under oath uh, under penalty of perjury not not under oath they lied under penalty of perjury they have opened themselves up for liability so let's take this all the way if that's what it's going to take anyway thanks for the super chat Zada Hugla, I was just wondering if open videos on another tab counts as engagement. I, I have your newest video playing, but I'm watching you on this tab. I'm not sure, although I did know somebody who, I guess like this YouTuber had a fan who was um, playing like 15 of their vid videos per day on different tabs and everything, and YouTube like caught on to it, and like revoked monetization from the person because they thought that they were cheating the system or attempting to cheat it or something so i never encourage anybody to cheat the system do not cheat the system I want to put that on record but yeah i think watch time is what really matters like the more watch time the better it pushes the video really 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 far like the more views it gets or the the longer people watch it and when people click off of YouTube and go to a different website, that's another factor that lowers the video's reach. V YouTube doesn't want somebody to leave the website. So if somebody stays on the video to the very end and then watches something from the same creator for the next video and even likes and subscribes, all of this stuff adds to it. It contributes to like sending a video even further and a creator in general so yeah that's generally how the whole thing works i've been using uh i've been on like i've been on youtube for god dude how long seven years maybe eight years now and i've learned so many little tips and tricks with youtube it's crazy i should write a book about how it works anyway thank you for the um the super chat there uh zada hugla rick robin cagnan Heard of Bethany Hamilton's surfing past fear? Sean Spicer's The Parrots Go Bananas in DC. Drano's Unmuzzle Me, please. Another thing to point out is Missy Robertson, the author, is Phil's sister-in-law. Okay, interesting. Um, I haven't heard of that. I do know of Sean Spicer's Parrots Go Bananas, though. Uh, it's a book. Uh, it's a children's book written by Sean Spicer, and it's absolutely nuts, dude. I That one's on the list of things to read. I'll probably be reading that tomorrow again if you guys want to like come to my telltale and filter channel wednesday and thursday mornings 10 30 a.m eastern time i read like ch you know propaganda children's books and all kinds of interesting stuff so anyways yeah thanks for the super chat city rail dude yes but as i said youtube actually lied to the government agency that i got them with they actually lied to the government. If they can lie to an Australian government, why not the U.S. government? Oh, they totally do. If they lie to the U.S. government, which I'm not surprised to find that they do, absolutely, sue them. I mean, I know that it's easier said than done, but there are remedies for this. If they lie to the U.S. government or any government at all, there's a remedy. Sue the shit out of them. Sue the, you know, not YouTube. I'm not saying sue YouTube. Never sue YouTube. That's a bad idea. I'm saying if somebody, anybody, some big multinational corporation lies to the government, sue the shit out of them, sue them out of existence. You know, uh, I, like I said, easier said than done, but that's the remedy. And you should probably assume people are going to lie to the government like that, especially big multinational corporations. That's the type of thing I expect. Anyways, all right, let's listen to Steven Crowder. Um, I've given enough lead up to this. Let's just jump in. This is where he's going to talk about the new Barbie doll coming out by Mattel and complain about it. And while we listen, keep in mind, just keep it in the back of your head. We received this leaked video of him being a, a, an abusive scumbag to his wife, right? 
And apparently everybody was like all surprised by this. It just blew him away. Like, oh, I had no idea Steven Crowder was like that. Okay, now let's listen to him talk about this Barbie. I, I don't oh, know. I don't even know how hey, to tell oh. people to get to your show. Yeah, I know. I well, go, just drive to, you know where, and see it live. Yeah, <laughs> drive to Dick's Sporting Goods. Yes. <laughs> All right, now it's jumping in. Oh. Sorry. Okay, now it starts, I think. <laughs> the Schenectady Airport that plays on every screen next to Don, whatever Don Lemon's doing now. Okay, so I'm sorry. We've dragged out. Oh, yeah. we, we, we've wasted your time, but you know what? That's part of it. So Barbie, Mattel, in order to boost inclusivity, mm -hmm. just announced... And at one point, you would have thought this was a sketch. All references are available for you at LightEarthCrowder.com. <laughs> this is real. They just announced uh, the release. I feel bad even saying it. I Down Syndrome Barbie. Yes. The world's first Barbie with Down Syndrome will give children <laughs> the opportunity to play with more inclusive dolls. This doll is breaking <laughs> barriers. <laughs> being the first fashion doll. Yeah, with Dude, why are these people laughing at this? I don't understand. Remember what I said about him being an abusive scumbag and that, like, this is apparently coming as, like, a surprise to everybody in, you know, in his orbit? He's laughing about this right now. Keep listening. It gets even worse. With retard Down strength. Is this real? Allowing more children to project their future through fashion doll play and imagine what is possible. Mattel, Barbie's parent company, announced the oh, new no. figures will soon be hitting store <laughs> oh, shelves. No. Well, here's the thing. They, they really have been going full bore, and Mattel actually announced plans to expand this uh, in the name of diversity uh, before the end of the year with sickle. Is it, look, it's not... Hang on. I'm sorry. I'm, we're going to have to hit what he said just now, but it's not about diversity. It's about, first of all, appealing to a broader audience, and second, it's about making people who have you know, mental conditions or even physical conditions or whatever, like people with Down syndrome, making them feel good, making them feel happy. Why is that so wrong in this guy's mind? Seriously, it's like, who was honestly surprised when they f came to find that this guy is a scumbag? Who was surprised by that revelation? Okay, keep listening because again, it gets worse. You think that was bad? Just wait. Full board, Mattel actually announced plans to expand this uh, in the name of diversity uh, before the end of the year with sickle cell Barbie. Oh, for the So love that's of God. something they also, you know, look. <laughs> wow. So, any question this guy is racist? Let me just explain the backstory to everything in this image here. Sickle cell anemia is a condition that evolved out of Africa because malaria was spreading around Africa. And you have these little red blood cells, I think. It's called hemoglobin, actually. And hemoglobin... Hang on. Okay, hemoglobin is shaped like... This, okay, if you're looking on screen, this is what hemoglobin, hemoglobin looks like. Kind of like a, a, it's like a donut, but the hole isn't open. It just kind of dips in. And oxygen molecules attach to that center dip. Well, malaria attaches to the center dip also on hemoglobin. So there's an evolutionary adaptation called sickle cell anemia that cuts the hemoglobin uh, cell in half. And this is actually an extremely fascinating um, like piece of science to me. So if you're looking at the screen, this is what it looks like. A normal red blood cell looks like the left. It's the donut shape. And then a sickle cell is just like a moon shape. And that protects people from catching malaria. But it has a downside in that it's harder for it to carry oxygen molecules. Not impossible, but your oxygen level is usually lower and you have a lower tolerance for like physical activities as a result. And um, so black people commonly have sickle cell anemia or if it shows up, then it's in, you know, people from the black community, from the African, African American community. Right. Well, Steven Crowder decides to make a joke about black people it's called sickle cell barbie and there's a planned parenthood sign in the background because 
you know, black people are, you know, a billion babies around. Uh, they don't understand how to use birth control, and so they just get a billion abortions. This is just pure unadulterated racism, right? Is there any question that this guy was a scumbag from the start? Does anybody wonder if that video of him was real? It it seems blatantly obvious to me that he is just a scumbag, like an abusive scumbag, right? I, I'm not using that as an insult. I'm not trying to be insulting, really. I'm trying to point out the guy's personality. He is proud of this about himself. He is proud to be abusive and racist and hateful and bigoted and sexist. I mean, this is like a fundamental piece of his personality that he enjoys and wants people to know about, right? University, uh, before the end of the year with oh oh yeah and I, we can't forget about that other piece of his personality where he likes making fun of people with down syndrome can't forget that one pickle cell barbie oh for the so love that's God. something they also you know look everyone's <laughs> everyone's involved down syndrome barbie short bus not included did she have to oh, say <laughs> did she have to say smash through barriers when we all know about special needs strength yeah. i mean for I, crying I, out loud I, I, <laughs> why are they laughing i don't like, I don't see what's funny here. This isn't funny at all. I'm really trying to understand what makes this so funny to somebody like Steven Crowder, but I'm just lost. I looked at the Barbie and I'm like, she, how, she doesn't look that how, downsy. That, exactly. That's my whole point. It looks how like Amy Schumer. Oh, yeah. He likes to shout out his, his Rumble channel constantly. Um, like, the thing is, this isn't even unusual for Steven Crowder. This is, like, exactly the type of thing that you can expect if you're watching something from the dude. This type of thing from him. It says this is the Down Syndrome yeah, Barbie, and it's, it's like, says, here, yeah. another Barbie to sell? Like, I feel like I'm being taken advantage now of. Now with more retard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why is he like this? Like, what is he accomplishing by being like this? Just disgusting like everything about it i really don't get the point here like people are laughing but why what's funny here i'm i'm really trying to understand seriously there, there's nothing funny about this at all <laughs> Less why I promise. What are, I Professional know. assistant not you included. Top, Lena Dunham. <laughs> That's so weird. I don't know what to By do. By the way, if you see this or hear this. He says professional assistant not included because people who have Down syndrome need, uh, you know, an assistant usually. Why is that funny? It's not like, you know, I, okay, I can get behind the occasional joke that's at somebody else's expense if they're lighthearted about it or whatever i you know i'm okay with the occasional dark joke sometimes they can be pretty funny i'm pretty easy going when it comes to jokes but jokes reveal something about you they reveal where your mind is they reveal how you feel about issues like if all you do is joke about the Barbie that has Down syndrome and all of the qualities about people with Down syndrome and stuff like what is that showing us about who this guy is? He is absolutely terrible in every way. Again, I don't want to be insulting. I don't like insulting people, even people with YouTube channels that have five million subscribers gets like 20 million views a month on this thing. Even him, I don't like insulting. I'm not trying to insult. I'm just trying to understand why he revels in being a scumbag in all seriousness. Why does he enjoy this? Why does he want everybody around him to know this about him, that he's like this? This on YouTube, because I'm sure we've already had to hit it. Uh, this means... 
that what's going on is still on on, on Rumble, so we don't have to self censor on YouTube. And it's a live show Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern. Friday only on Mug Club. Yeah. The rest of the time on Rumble. Yeah. And uh, we encourage you to watch. We do not get to do this without you. We're funded by viewers like you at Mug Club, unlike Bugs. NPR, who's funded by tax dollars at Airport. To- now NPR gets government grants that make up one percent of their revenue per month or year or something like that like it's a complete misrepresentation of npr but you know you gotta stop and address it i can't let him gish gallop propaganda like this i cannot let him get away with propagandizing on my channel like that monkey pox ken can we get that yes (laughs) monkey pox ken I mean, I, there is a racist undertone here, deeply racist undertone. Um, it's an undertone that, you know, might otherwise act as a dog whistle, but not with Steven Crowder. He's pretty open about the fact that he's racist, right? <laughs> That's only fair. He drives his That's convertible. Only, it's inclusive. Drives his convertible and skin flakes just flying off. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get Barbie in the face? Yeah. Oh, no, gosh. What do you have, leprosy? No, I just yeah. I went to a Norwegian techno festival. Right. I don't get it. The guy is supposed to be like a comedian. Like He goes to, he does comedy shows all the time. I'm not seeing the joke here at all. How about the 42% suicide rate, Barbie? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, those. yeah. I think that's an anti-trans joke for what, for what it's worth. What's funny? I'm really trying to get the humor. And what's the point of covering this? I want I want everybody to be fully aware of exactly who this guy is. I don't want it to be a surprise to anybody when a video releases, like the one that came out about Steven Crowder and his wife, you know, where he was, like, harassing and attacking her and, and abusing her for all intents and purposes. I don't want it to be a surprise. I want everybody to know exactly who this guy is. Yes. I'm sorry. If we're going there, let's go there. It, it comes it, with a nice sailor's knot. Yeah, there's a, you know, there's a noose in every, bar, every room in the Barbie uh, dream house. <laughs> why? I, I don't. What's the joke here? Like, why is this funny to anybody? <laughs> But it comes with a little eight ball that says, not today. Look, look, here's the thing. I have worked with, you know, the special needs people for, for years. Yeah, while I volunteer. me too. They Please don't tell me that. I never was dating. sitting there. Yeah, well, that's just called taking advantage. It's Sorry. called grooming, Dave. Uh, it's called. I don't get the context here. There. Yeah, well, that's just called taking advantage. It's called grooming, Dave. Uh, it's called grooming little ladies. Um, none of them ever thought, I, I, I don't feel represented. Right. They never complained about it. They were t- No, but you bring a Barbie doll up to somebody who has Down syndrome and you say, this Barbie is just like you. You know, this Barbie has your same experiences. It could make somebody feel better. It could make a kid feel better. What's wrong with making a kid feel better? Seriously, he's, he's sitting here complaining about the fact that a kid is being represented. That a kid who is disadvantaged and has problems and will never, will most likely feel like they're not like everybody else in some way. They're being given something that kind of represents themselves. If that makes a kid a little bit happier, why do you care? Honestly, does he think that this is like some culture war issue that he should be leaning into? Like... If we don't fix this, then the next thing is what? What's the logical end to the? What's your slippery slope you're afraid of happening if a Down syndrome kid feels a little bit of representation in their lives? I guarantee it. If a Barbie came out that had leukemia, as Nico Nerd says here, he'd make fun of that too. He would make fun of leukemia patients. Absolutely. He's making fun of Down syndrome patients right now. Does it get lower than this? How could you possibly get lower than this? This is insane. Totally fine. They were totally fine because, with their toys. Because Barbie is Just like Chevy girls weren't going, Barbie's too thin. 
Right, exactly. I mean, Barbie allows me to live a full life, apparently. Is yeah. What, dang it. And I, he's going to clip this in now. <laughs> I know soundboard. <laughs> I'm marking it down right now. It. Sorry, dang it. <laughs> Dude, and, and everybody on this show, look at these people. Everybody on this show is tacitly endorsing what's happening here and what's being said and this personality type. How do they live with themselves? Making fun of a Barbie that has Down syndrome. Making fun of Down syndrome kids. Seriously. I, I, I really don't know how it gets lower. Gottfried Lieben, or Liebniz says, just keep watching, he goes lower. I'm hard-pressed to believe you, but uh, okay. Let's keep going. Let's see. I know soundboard. <laughs> I'm marking it down right now. It. Sorry, dang it. <laughs> All right, dude. If you like Steven Crowder, this is what you endorse right here. So you guys can comment if you, you know, look. If you have a kid with Down syndrome and you're really happy about Down syndrome, Barbie, great, good for you. I just think that it's stupid. Yes. And I don't mean stupid, like cool, like oh, yo, that's stupid. Yeah, I mean that's stupid, unintelligent. I thought you guys were doing a parody of a commercial. No. I know. I I no. I know <laughs> some of the stuff no. exists, but that one even went a little. I, Look, why do you care if kids get representation, like kids with Down syndrome feel a little bit happier because somebody else shares their experiences or because they have a doll that represents their experiences? Why do you care? This is insane. I mean, yeah, it's look, we need it. It was needed, but now we have it. So everything is good. So let's move on to a story that I think is also really important here. Yeah. Um, remember COVID? Yes. Remember that? Remember that was a thing? And some of you may not know, uh, some of you who maybe were a little bit younger, uh, the entire world got locked down. Yeah. Right? Uh, okay. Not the United States, though. There was no uh, federal lockdown in the U.S. Now, st some states had some lockdown protocols for a short time, but overall, the U.S. really didn't lock down. Uh, some businesses optionally chose to operate virtually or to temporarily shut down or, you know, any number of things. But that was private businesses doing private business decisions. Okay, let's keep, let's keep listening. I just want to set that straight. Uh, some of you who maybe were a little bit younger, uh, the entire world got locked down. Yeah. Right? They were locked down. Uh, then there were vaccine mandates. It upended the... There were never max, uh, vaccine mandates in the United States at any point ever. There was a testing mandate, which you could be exempted from if you got vaccinated, i.e. you had to take a weekly test if you worked for a company that was over 100 employees, I believe. I don't even think that went through. I think that was challenge and then shot down by the Supreme Court or something like that anyways. Um, that's not a vaccine mandate. That's a testing mandate. Okay. But all right. Let's keep listening to him lie and propagandize about it. Down, yeah. Right. They were locked down. Uh, then there were vaccine mandates. It upended the economy. Unemployment to numbers that we've never seen in our lifetime. A fundamental. That's true. Mental shifting of the economy. All on the word of a few experts and, of course, the lackeys who said trust the science. And I know that right now. This mm, OK, well, it wasn't a few experts or lackeys. It was basically every expert in the field does explaining how this all works. And it wasn't even just in the United States. It was worldwide. Experts in France and Germany and Poland and hell, South America, all of South, like Brazil and Chile and Canada and everywhere, even China and Russia and African countries were, you know, explaining how this works. They were all in agreement. Everybody. Your ass came up with conspiracy theories and claimed to be persecuted because of all this other garbage. Like, that's a complete misrepresentation of the situation. I just want to put that on record. All on the word of a few experts and, of course, the lackeys who said trust the science. It was, it was every expert, but okay. And I know that right now this isn't super topical, right? And everyone always wants to jump on the trend and the trend and the trend, but I think this is probably the most important subject we cover today. Why? The only way the left wins is if there is no sunlight. They squirm anytime there's transparency. They squirm anytime they're called to the mat to answer for their actions. Uh, okay. Well, I'm to the left of hunting the homeless for sport, which is not somewhere that Steven Crowder sits. 
So, yeah, I mean, I, I guess you could say I'm exposing these ideas to sunlight. Lay it on me. And they want you to now actually believe in their complicit media, right, in the industrial entertainment media complex. They want you to believe that they never did all of those things. So let me They didn't. This never happened. There were no federal lockdowns. Some states chose to lock people down. Some. Uh, and it wasn't even like people weren't allowed to leave. It was like, t you know, businesses had to temporarily close and they gave them PPP money for that. But, yeah, there were no vaccine mandates either. Like this whole thing is made up. But OK, keep going. Real entertainment media complex. They want you to believe that they never did all of those things. So let me sort of lead the way here. Halloween 20. Please lead the way. 22, the Atlantic started running cover, right? And that's for the expert class, the, all the, the, the science. Yeah. Right. The science, as they called it, trademarked. Uh, they ran an article. No, it, it's scientific fact that COVID is a real, you know, a, a virus, uh, the coronavirus is, that infects people with COVID and was killing a lot of people. I mean, what's like the debate here? I don't understand. The, all the, the, the science. Yeah. Right. The science, as they called it, trademarked. Uh, they ran an article called, called Let's Declare a Pandemic Amnesty. Now, this article implored readers to, quote, forgive the experts for their misguided recommendations. Dude, what is he talking about? Is this even real? I'm deeply skeptical. And mandate. So these are some of the things I said. We have to put these fights aside and declare a pandemic amnesty. We can leave out the willful purveyors of actual misinformation while forgiving the hard calls that people had no choice but to make with imperfect knowledge. I, yeah. I, I have to stop them right there. I read the beginning of that article and I'm like, no, you're lying. You said you were on a hiking trail with cloth masks that you made for your family, that there was a signal that the lead hiker would give if anybody was coming close where you would put the masks on and you had no idea that cloth masks wouldn't work. I did. Okay, that's interesting. He says that. Uh, first of all, masks do work for preventing the spread of illness. They do, in fact, work. Now, there's question at this point in time as to whether or not cloth masks or, you know, the, the paper, you know, surgical masks or whatever do anything to prevent the spread of this current iteration of COVID or hell, even the original iteration of COVID. But we do, in fact, know through studies that masks do present the spread of illness. So it was completely and totally 100% reasonable for experts to recommend people wear masks in most settings, at the very least indoors when you're around a bunch of people. That was a totally reasonable ask. They weren't asking you to saw off your leg with a chainsaw, okay? They were asking you to wear a mask. It's not that big of a deal. Now, like I said, that may not be currently, that might not be the most accurate scientific consensus at this moment. But, you know, they're going to stretch this and twist it around and spin it into some ridiculous narrative where some ambiguous they is out to get you and trick you into doing something that they want you to do, like wearing a mask or some other nonsense. Get a guided you tour did. with them, and it didn't work because they were doing Navy signals. I only know the Air Force signals. Well, that's that's apparently true. You did. I have no idea what he's talking about right now, but he has a lot of inside jokes that are like that only make sense if you're inside of his like extremist bubble, and it's really really strange to hear this stuff from the outside sometimes. Did the bicycling stop? <laughs> <as a public? laughs> Yesterday, I saw the guy doing this. The bicycle stop. I saw him unironically doing this. Well, good. I mean, that's okay. If you don't know, that's the sign you're supposed to put out. It's like your turn signal. It's supposed to alert people behind you or cars that you're turning left or right. I forget what it is. I think I forget. I think this is I'm stopping and this is I'm turning and then turning left. And then your right hand is you're turning right or something. I don't remember now, but there is some set of turn signage or signals that you're supposed to be giving if you're riding a bicycle is he really going to make fun of this i mean i shouldn't be surprised he made fun of down syndrome kids earlier so 
saw the guy doing this, the bicycle stop. I saw him unironically doing this, and I just, I mean, I ran him over. I was going to say, please tell me you took a hard right into his bike. Yes, I did. So don't let them tell you that we didn't know these things. We've known it for 100 years. Lockdowns were actually not recommended by the WHO immediately. Sorry, and I know we're going to get into people saying this, but But they weren't the the science. It was the CDC, and it was Fauci. Exactly. So. Okay, I have no idea what they're talking about. Again, they propagandize and lie about things constantly. So take everything they say with a grain of salt. Everything. Uh, let's go like even the most innocuous things that you s- might think are meaningless and pointless and, and irrelevant. Don't buy even a word of it. Look it up yourself. Everything. Oh, to and, and matter of fact, I even looked up whether that Mattel Barbie doll was real. They seem pretty convincing in claiming that it was. You shouldn't trust them in anything, anything. Look it all up. That they weren't the, the science. Part. It was a CDC and it was Fauci. Exactly. So uh, let's go to, uh, I guess let's start with now, what they're saying. Okay. These experts versus them. So it's a matter of record and it's irrefutable. And hopefully you can use this with your friends because watch the conversation change. Remember, just. Oh, this is fascinating. He's about to lay propaganda on us. He's about to give people a propagandistic argument to turn them into conspiracy theorists. Okay. Don't forget. Don't think, did I dream that? All your friends now who are saying, oh, you know, we didn't know. No, they did know. Those same people at your dinner meeting, at, at, at your Thanksgiving dinners were saying, we have to lock down. Can you believe that Republicans are going to spread this? Yeah. Remember, we were providing information at that point in time while the experts were giving you one side. Now they're acting as though. They- okay. Can, when he says we, we were giving you information, what he means is conspiracy theorists. And no, you weren't giving me information you were giving me conjecture and speculation built on absolutely nothing that's very different there's no reason to believe anything that this guy had to say because he wasn't building it on evidence or studies or hard facts he's he was building it on feelings they never had access to this information. It's not true. It's just like Fauci when he said AIDS was airborne and other scientists said, no, it's not. Yeah. But he was in a position of authority. So now we have. OK, I don't know what he's talking about. But again, he's throwing out. This is uh, similar to the fire hose of falsehoods. It's a propaganda technique. Um, I think this is probably a gish gallop where he throws out a bunch of claims back to back to back to back and you don't have time to refute or pull them apart you just have to move on to the next one because stopping at every single claim would take forever that's the strategy and most of the claims that you hear this guy say you probably won't believe but a couple you might and that's all he wants move you over on a couple of little issues It's generally, in my opinion, a dangerous thing to air propaganda. It's it's very dangerous to air propaganda without any pushback. So I feel obligated to push back on every piece that I see, every single piece. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, uh, Blackface in Chief, uh, Justin Trudeau, University of Ottawa on Monday. There's another Blackface in Chief. It's just little things, little pieces of propaganda that are used to turn everybody against one specific idea or belief system or ideology or whatever. Anything he can do to push people in a far right extremist direction, he'll say it and he'll do it. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, uh, Blackface in Chief, uh, Justin Trudeau, University of Ottawa on Monday, said that he actually never forced anyone to get vaccinated. Okay, I don't know what this is. And I, is this Justin Trudeau in that old college film that he did like 30 years ago or something? I have no idea. Okay, sorry, wrong clip. Yeah. Uh, here's All the right of the clip scientists show. and the medical experts and the researchers, not just in Canada, but around the world, understood that vaccination was going to be the way through this. And therefore, while not forcing anyone to get vaccinated, I chose to make sure 
that all the incentives and all the protections were there to encourage Canadians to get vaccinated. And that's exactly what they did. We got vaccinated to a higher level than just about any other of our peer country. Yeah. Yeah. Threatening people with jail time and freezing their bank accounts. It was just. A- OK, that's not what happened. Again, propaganda. Canada went through the exact thing that the U.S. went through, to my knowledge. They had a testing mandate, and if you wanted to be exempted from it, then you had to get vaccinated. And if you wanted to be exempted from it, you had to get vaccinated. But I assume what he's referring to here was the big trucker protest uh, in Ottawa, is it, isn't that what happened? Hang on, let me just look this up. I forget what the trucker protest was over exactly. It was over something related to. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Oop. What was the um, Canada convoy protest over? Um, what was it? It was. Uh, Banned gatherings, blah, 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 OPS. I don't... Okay, there are a bunch of sources here, but... Yeah, it was in Ottawa. From 8,000 to 18,000 pedestrian protesters at its peak, it was huge. Freedom Convoy is what it was called. Convoy de la Liberté. I know I'm butchering that French pronunciation. I apologize. Yeah, first aimed at a COVID-19 vaccine mandate for cross-border truckers. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. So that's what the uh, the original convoy thing, the freedom convoy thing was over. Um, people were protesting a mandate. If you were crossing the border, you had to get a vaccine, basically. And they were protesting that. Well, see, that's the thing. It's not exactly a mandate if you have a way out of it. Right now, he says they froze people's bank accounts and jailed them for not getting vaccinated. Again, another piece of propaganda. That's not what happened. They had their bank accounts frozen and went to jail for being domestic terrorists. Not all eight to 18,000 protesters, only the domestic terrorists among them. Those are the ones that were jailed and or had their bank accounts frozen. That's it. But every word out of his mouth, practically, is propagandistic. And we have to hit every single one. Uh, By the way, again, I'm going to watch this entire thing tomorrow. If you, you know, if it's already the next day and you missed it, just check my website or my unfiltered YouTube channel. But I I stream Wednesday mornings, Thursday mornings, 1030 a.m. Eastern Time. If you guys want to watch the live stream, I'll break the whole thing down. So. Anyway, let's keep listening here. Treat. Yeah. yeah. Threatening people with jail time and freezing their bank accounts. It was just incentives, uh, like a uh, r- rapist's gun. Um, okay, wow. That, that, <laughs> okay, it took me a second to understand what he was saying. Yeah, so uh, those were incentives, jail time, and um, what was the other thing he said? Jail time and freezing bank accounts. Those are incentives to not be a domestic terrorist. They did not do that to all eight to 18,000 protesters again. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What's that? <laughs> Bitch, it's incentive <laughs> to sleep with me. I am an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's. What is that? Is that. I, I think that's a reference to something that I've seen. I'm not sure exactly what it is. <laughs> Don't you? Haven't you ever heard of quantitative easing, bitch? The point is, yeah. this is this is what they say. It's incentives. Oh, isn't that a nice? Isn't that a nice just term now? These were incentives: freezing bank accounts and ruining your. Yeah, life. that's not an incentive. No. So let's go back to they're trying to. Like again, those were only those things were only used against people that were domestic terrorists who were like plotting attacks and stuff like that. It's not just for normal protesters or people who didn't want to get vaccinated, like he's implying here. If you didn't want to get vaccinated, you didn't have to. You could just walk away from the job. You, you know, there are cert- that wasn't for every job either. That was only for truckers that are crossing over the border. 
anyway, just every last bit of this is propagandistic nonsense. All of it. Right. Memory hole, you. Back. Then... Prime Minister Blackface, who did it like nine times. The thing about the fact that this guy has been forgiven, it just shows you none of this selective outrage is real. This guy did it more times than you probably wear an outfit, period. Dude, I have no... Again, this is all propaganda. I have no clue what he's talking about. He's trying to make Justin Trudeau out to be a racist when he's... I don't know. You know, I would venture to guess that Justin Trudeau has probably done some racist things in his life. I have no idea what this whole Blackface thing is about. I paid zero attention to it by and large justin trudeau has fought for the struggles of minority groups and that is respectable at the same time nobody is perfect trudeau definitely uh mistreated indigenous groups terribly and the canadian government generally has or uh, let me rephrase the canadian government under Trudeau's watch and the watches of the people that came before Trudeau terribly mistreated uh, indigenous groups and other uh, minority groups. So nobody's perfect. Is he better than the conservative option? Absolutely. Holy Christ on a cracker, dude. Trudeau is as good as it gets as far as politicians and racism goes. Not perfect, but significantly better than who Steven Crowder would pick for that position. I mean, we just listened to Steven Crowder make jokes about sickle cell Barbie. Seriously, how depraved does it get? And he's, st he's sitting here claiming that Trudeau is the racist one, really. In your life, blackface. More times than I did it. <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> which is hard to do. I mean, depends on which years we're taking, which seasons, but, you know, it's certainly close. Yes. <laughs> and we love it. I mean, is he admitting that he's done blackface before? I'm not really understanding here. Okay. You for it. So, <laughs> like, how can he, in all seriousness, criticize anybody for something like that when he has done it or he has, like, he makes jokes about the black community constantly. It's just insane. <laughs> Back then, Trudeau, he actually made it so that people couldn't even go about their day at all without getting the vaccine. This is then. I had to because of the new rules with the restaurant. They yep. said I better get another dose because I can't go anywhere. I can't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Look, you don't have to get vaccinated, but if you don't get vaccinated, you have to order out. You can't sit in a restaurant with a bunch of other people around you. You can't put other people's lives at risk. You want to sit in a little isolated hole where you're not going to risk other people's lives? Okay, great. You don't have to be vaccinated. That's perfectly fine. If you want to live in society, this is part of being in a society. It's like your right to swing your fist ends at the tip of my nose. You're not allowed to swing your fist right here anywhere else you can when you go in public and you are unvaccinated and screaming covid conspiracies and everything else you're putting other people's lives at risk by not being vaccinated specifically and more restrictions are on the way justin trudeau is promising vaccine mandates for the federal public service and for travelers we're going to make sure in the coming weeks uh, that anyone uh, 12 or over, older who wants to get on a plane or a train come to my be house. fully vaccinated. <laughs> See, this is why I'm sorry. This is him talking about Canada. Why are we talking about Canada? He went out of his way to, to point out that Canada had like these or I'm sorry. He went out of his way to talk about all of the restrictions and mandates that we had and blah, 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 blah. Except we didn't have any mandates in the United States. So he has to go all the way to Canada. Why is he talking about Canada? Like, it, doesn't he operate out of the United States? Aren't, isn't his audience primarily in the United States? I can't speak for Steven Crowder, but my audience is like 93% in the United States or something crazy like that. Why is he talking about Canada? You know why? Because... Their vaccine uh, rules or mandates or whatever were more strict than the United States were, 
So he has to make it out like he has to make it seem as though. Uh, or let me refer. He has to equivocate. He has to combine the two. He's trying to make it out like the United States is is or was just as bad as Canada was, and that's simply false. Canada wasn't even that bad, anyways. <laughs> September twenty first of twenty twenty one. Yep. A year and a half into the pandemic. He was very proud of it, too. Yes. So for him to now say, I never forced anyone. And by the way, let's... Well, he didn't force anybody. Also, uh, here's another then, so, so you know. Prime Minister Blackface described, and we're going to get to Fauci, uh, he described people protesting the vaccine mandates, which, by the way, why would you need to protest anything? If there's no vaccine mandate, which is what he's saying now. He described the people protesting the vaccine mandate... Uh, <laughs> people protest things all the time that aren't real. People protest a big globe all the time. You know, those flat earthers are all upset that big globe is out to get them or some other nonsense. There are protests about the fact that the government created birds. They're really little robots designed to spy on you. They're not real. People protest stuff all the time. What's he talking about? Gee, uh, he described people protesting the vaccine mandates, which, by the way, why would you need to protest anything if there's no vaccine mandate, which is what he's saying sure. now. He described the people protesting the vaccine mandate, uh, the vaccine mandate, which is a figment of your imagination, mm -hmm. as disgusting, subhuman. And to okay, well, if he calls anybody subhuman, I don't believe in that. But again, like every clip in this thing is, it should be assumed that it's disingenuously edited and stuck together to make it seem like something other than what it actually was. I see that all the time from the far right, which Steven Crowder most definitely is. Canadians at home watching in disgust and disbelief at this behavior, wondering how this could have happened in our nation's capital after everything we've been through together. I assume he's talking about the Freedom Convoy? This is not the story of our pandemic of our country, of our people. The two worst human beings that I have. Okay, hold on, let me listen again. Of our country. This is not the story of our pandemic, of our country, of our people. Okay, well, Steven Crowder said that Trudeau claimed people were subhuman. I didn't pick up on that at all. Did anybody pick up on that? Where did he say that they're subhuman? Or that they're even disgusting or, or evil or whatever. He just said, this isn't the story of our pandemic. What? The two worst human beings that I have ever seen in politics, that man and Governor Whitmer in Michigan. Yeah. People, there, there are people we disagree with. There are people who you can tell just get off on power and abusing right. it. He's one of them. Yeah. How did you draw that conclusion? I haven't seen that at all, like even a little bit. What? And he's he's so weak, he's dangerous. Yes. Because he's going to have to do something to make himself look strong. Like, what? What are they talking about right now? And do they feel the same about Donald Trump, I wonder? Mm -hmm. Freezing the bank accounts of truckers and saying that they're disgusting people. Again, I'll give you the timeline. About a year into the pandemic. It's yes. not like we didn't know anything. Then come on, are you serious? Yeah. That okay, I don't understand the point. A year into the pandemic, what does that have to do with anything? That's when the Freedom Convoy was running around doing their stuff. And it wasn't truckers that he said that about you know who it was domestic terrorists at the trucker convoy thing it was people that were acting as provocateurs is people that were doing extremist stuff it wasn't just randos that were like wandered into the park oh is there a protest happening right now that's not what happened and they know that again this is how propaganda works that point. Well, guess what? They were removing us from YouTube, yeah. from Facebook, from Twitter. If we said that, hey, these actually these these lockdowns don't work. The W. Oh, did they remove him from YouTube? Looks like he's still here to me. Now, I think that they took videos down if he propagandized and lied about COVID and spread disinformation about it. Totally justified, in my opinion. I didn't get a single video taken down through the entire pandemic, and I talked about it every step of the way. Weird how that works, huh? When you don't lie and propagandize and warp things out of perspective, you don't have to worry about people saying what you're doing is disinformation. When you don't spread disinformation, you don't have to worry about being blamed for spreading disinformation. Weird how that works, huh?
WHO doesn't recommend them. Remember, that was one of the suspensions. No lockdowns, according to WHO, yeah. who also denied that um, you know that Taiwan existed. On the first one, on the very first. Again, that he always sticks in those little barbs all through it. Denied Taiwan existed. Was that have to do with absolutely anything? Is that even true? Everything this guy says is propaganda. God, I wish they'd stop doing this. It's kind of frustrating. I'm going to skip forward here. What is... Really? That's... <laughs> God, it's... So frustrating, dude. That this guy is... So propagandistic. I got to give him credit. He is a master propagandist. Disgusting. <laughs> another another, uh, another uh, issue then. Uh, you know what? I, again, this is a PG-13 show. I'm pretty sure I know what Nick's going to say after this clip. I will not. And I, I, no, no, you know what? <laughs> do it. Do it, Nick. I think you let your freak flag fly. So Prime, but Deputy Prime Minister... Uh, Christia Freeland. Or Cock Christi tucker. <laughs> whoa, whoa. That's not an insult. She's whoa. a lady. Oh. That just means was, she's doing her part. I thought it was a guy. Sorry. Uh, Why are they like this? I don't understand. How did they get to this point, honestly? How did it get to the point where they are willing to make fun of kids with Down syndrome? This is absolutely unhinged from reality. And it's disgusting. Anyway, I'll tell you what, I'm going to call it there for the moment. If you guys want to see more of it, come over to my Telltale and Filtered YouTube channel Wednesday mornings and Thursday mornings, 10.30 a.m. Uh, I cover this type of thing all the time. And check my website, owenmorgan.com, if you want to see more stuff on there. Um, like, Just search for like Steven Crowder and everything should pop up. <clears throat> Let's take a look at uh, Super Chats. Where was I? Sarah Nova, the God movie is the ad for your content for me. And it and it's ones for those super long expensive ads. Wait, the God's Not Dead movie is the ad? Okay, that's weird. Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? At least they're advertising with like a uh an audience that is not receptive to it really. At least they're not advertising to somebody who could be susceptible to propaganda, right? I think my, I would like to think my audience is less susceptible to propaganda than, you know, other groups of people. Of course, that's like the first step to falling for propaganda, right? Is thinking you're not susceptible to it. So anyway, yeah, I have almost no control over advertisements. I wish I had a little more control than I do, but yeah, anyway. Donar Drake, evening Owen. I hope your evening is going well. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's going pretty well. Uh, glad you guys made it. But anyway, I'll tell you what, guys. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me. It's been fun. I'm going to hop off of here for now. Um, again, if you guys want to come see me, check out my unfiltered YouTube channel. I do this exact thing over there, Wednesdays and Thursdays. And you can check out edited versions of what I do on that um you know, on that YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget, like, when you watch one of my videos, please like it, subscribe, and watch the whole thing if possible. If, if you can't watch the whole thing, then at least make it a little bit further than you would have otherwise, because watch time pushes the video further, basically. So, anyway. All right, guys, I'm Audi. I will see you guys. If not tomorrow morning, then I'll see you next week, okay? All right, have a good one, everybody. That's all I've got for you. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check me out on Patreon. And take a look at my YouTube channels. Owen Morgan, where I talk about religious issues. Telltale Fireside Chat, where I talk about politics. Telltale Unfiltered, where I do long-form breakdowns of stuff like this. And Telltale Reads, where I read books by televangelists and others. I release everything in parts, but every part stands independently of the last. So you can jump in anywhere, and I'll make sure it makes sense. You can find some ad-free, uncensored, complete versions of all my videos on my website, owenmorgan.com. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for my email list to get early access to everything. All links are in the description. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.